Easton here. Now with what we're calling Down South Expeditions. This is gonna be video number three. And today I'm gonna to be doing a basics, what I bring over landing slash camping whenever I go out. So we're gonna dive into this video. Hope you guys like it and let's check it out. Obviously not every one of these items is gonna be something that you absolutely have to have. This is not an essentials video, but it's solely just what I bring when I go overlanding or truck camping, whatever you want to call it. We're going to start off with our biggest, biggest items and work our way down from, I guess, importance. So number one, I guess you don't absolutely have to have one of these, but it sure helps, it makes it a lot more fun. This is the Gazelle P4 Overland Edition tent. Now I'll throw in a picture of this thing set up. You guys saw it in our, in my previous video, my first video of us going to DuPont National Forest and doing some overlanding there. This thing is awesome. It sets up pretty quickly. I'm not gonna lie, it's not as fast as a, as a rooftop tent, but it is a lot bigger than most rooftop tents, especially for the price. I think this thing is around $400, and compared to the smallest rooftop tent is you know up there $1,100, $1,200. So for 400 bucks, this thing is absolutely awesome. It comes with a ground sheet, that keeps the condensation and stuff up off the actual bottom of the tent. So you would lay that down first, and then you pull out the sides to the tent, you lay it down, you put your stakes in the ground, and you're ready to go. Great option. If you guys are looking for a tent, I would definitely recommend the Gazelle T4 Overland Edition. So my next item on my list is what I bring with me every time. This is the Teton Zero Degree Sleeping Bag. Obviously, nothing crazy about this thing. You can zip it up around you. And around your neck like most sleeping bags this one is double linered and i have the other like kind of sheet if you will liner for the inside just adds a little bit more heat super easy to take in and out so if it's cold you can put it in there if it's warm it's no big deal you just take it out and put it in this little bag as well definitely a good bang for your buck this thing is not very expensive so next up also related to sleeping is going to be the teton sports foldable cot I mean, you guys did a review on this one not too long ago, so you guys can check that out. I'll make sure to link it up here if there's something you're interested in. Super easy. It's a lot easier than the other alternatives. Well, I say it's a little bit easier. Obviously, the self-inflating mattresses will probably be a little bit faster to set up, but, you know, pick your choose. I like to be off the ground a little bit when I sleep. It beats the alternative, which I had before, which was the electronic blow-up mattress, which took a ton of time to set up. Took a ton of time to get packed up and it took up just as much room when folded up as this and you have to worry about wires and you know getting all the air out of it just really aggravating all around plus you know you can pack a bunch of these and it still takes up about the same room pecan sports tent i mean cot pretty good so moving on from there we're gonna go to the goal zero yeti 200x love this thing so for a comparison here's my hand this thing is super tiny. It's got 187 watt hours of battery, which is plenty enough to charge basically anything you got. It'll run lights for hours and hours on end. It's got two USB-Cs, two USBs, a 12 volt car charger, one of the Goal Zero ports for charging their lights, and then one AC wall outlet, which is rated for 120 watts, and I think 160 or 180 watts surging. So. For, you know a little short amount of time so can't say nothing good things about this it's really durable it's got the nice rubber feet on the bottom of it it can go anywhere it's really lightweight this thing maybe weighs five pounds if that so for what it's worth it keeps you from having to use your own car battery and it's super mobile so there ain't no moving around your truck or car or whatever you got to plug in things this throw it in your tent throw it in your whatever you got and it's ready to go Throughout the video, if you got a question on anything else that I, maybe I didn't cover, make sure you leave a comment at the bottom. I'd love to do more videos on stuff that you guys are interested in. So if there's anything that you think I should have, or you just think that there's really no need for that, let me know in the comments. I'll make sure to answer them. I answer all my comments, so comment up. This light. This thing is at TJ Maxx, or wherever you want to find it. You probably get it on Amazon. It's like five or six dollars. And you pair this up with gear ties. This thing also, it doesn't have a magnet on it, but this is completely swivelable. The lights cut on and off individually. Super bright. This thing takes, I think, four double A's, so you know, not a big deal. You can put this on your roof rack. 
you can put it wherever, set it up in the tent, along with gear ties, which is going to take us right into gear ties. Can't have enough gear ties. Whether it's you got ratchet straps, and you know how when you get hands get cold, you're trying to untie the loose end of the ratchet strap in. Really aggravating. Gear ties solves that problem. You can tie them up really easily. No matter how cold your fingers get or how wet it is outside, you unscrew them or you loosen them up like that, and bam, I tie everything down with gear ties. If it's something I need to keep upright, I can tie them up with these. Obviously, I've got the super big ones all the way up to the little tiny ones for phone chargers. I use these for absolutely everything. We'll go ahead with the buddy heater. I'm a I'm an okay fan of this buddy heater. Buddy heaters in general, obviously, there are some people that say they're not healthy. Uh, you can't keep them in the tent, but I do carry along with me just because it really doesn't take up much room. And if I'm having trouble getting a fire and stuff like that, I can at least get my hands warm with this thing. I'm not going to run it all night in the tent because my sleeping bag and the tent is completely windproof. So, you know, I'm going to get warm one way or another. I just like having this thing around. You never know when you might need it. So, buddy heater, don't like this. It needs to be better, but whatever. I'm going to set that down. So my next little gadget here, I got this baby for Christmas. This is the ARB tire inflator slash deflator. It's completely electronic, really nice. Carry it around with you anywhere you go. Throw it in your bag, throw it in your seat, whatever you got. Super quick, put it on there, air down your tires. You know exactly what PSI they are. And if you have an onboard air system, plug it right in there. This is a little aftermarket fit I put on there, but super easy. Drone. Any good YouTuber, you got to have a drone, especially if you're doing outdoor slash camping footage. If you don't have that drone footage, then you just ain't got it. So this is the Maverick Pro. This is just the Maverick Pro. It's not the two. Obviously, see it here. You guys have seen the videos this thing takes. It's awesome. So if you're planning on doing some YouTubing, obviously this is a pretty good investment here. I was able to get this on sale and used on sale. So can't beat it. Mavic Air 2 or Mavic Pro 2. Any Yeti product. Enough said. So this right here is my knockoff Rhino Pack. I guess it's not knockoff because that's what it is, but knockoff Roto Packs. This thing, only for water. It's really good. I haven't had any problems with it. It says water type. Put it anywhere you want. There you go. Alrighty, so coming up last here before we get on to anything else that stays on the truck for 99% of the time or just gear that I couldn't put right here because Pretty difficult to move this is the sportsman's trunk from plano these things are really cheap they're pretty durable i mean you use this one a good bit lid comes off easily they are waterproof as long as you know they're not sprayed up and into and you can't go wrong with them they're super modular they don't take up a ton of room in your in your bed or your tr trunk or what have you so sportsman trunk from plano get you one now blog nation Inside the Plano, paper towels, more gear ties, headlamp, rechargeable, really nice, Walmart, you know. Cheater's Mod, butane torch, because sometimes your firewood gets wet, and this thing's the easiest way to get them started back. We got a few seasonings, got olive oil, all that good stuff. Obviously, the most important toilet paper. Plates, spatulas, cleaning gear, all that kind of stuff. That's basically what I keep in my Plano box. Throw anything in there. Alrighty, so this here, hope you guys like this angle. This is my Blackstone grill. It is a half griddle, half grill. It's a little cumbersome to get in and out of the truck, but I will be getting a little Coleman two burner stove here in the future, but I had this thing already, so you can throw it in the back of the truck. Obviously, you saw in the last video, you can make any meal on this thing because it has the griddle and the grill already on it but you do have to carry this big propane tank which is a little like i said it's pretty cumbersome for the whole unit so we'll be swapping this out soon but i figured i'd throw it in here because what i've been taking for the most part and finally we have the one thing that stays on the truck hopefully and i never have to use it is the max tracks these are nothing special these are chinese max tracks they're eight like 60 or 70 dollars pretty cheap considering all the other max tracks on the market cost over $200 or even more. I mean, yeah, I'm all into American-made stuff. I love American-made stuff, but when it comes to saving money on stuff, I'm probably not gonna use all that often, and I can just swap these out when they do get old. Um, they come with the mountain hardware, which is really nice. 
this thing is on here pretty daggum good i've also got you know the gear ties holding them tight so they're the wind and knocking them around and all that okay everybody appreciate it for watching this video hope you guys liked it if you have any recommendations for anything that i should get for overlanding or truck camping please leave it in the comments i love buying stuff for overlanding and i love showing you guys what i got and what i do like and what i don't and i'll give you guys a real opinion so appreciate it for watching and the cherokee national forest video that we are going to do this coming weekend will be coming up any day now so appreciate it guys easton with down south expeditions out